Welcome to Electro Online. Here's our first example of how to calculate the reactionary forces caused by distributed load on a beam. Here we have a beam which is 6 meters long, supported at point A, and at point B we have it, what we call a distributed load, a load that starts with a force of 3,000 newtons per meter on the left side and increases to 6,000 newtons per meter on the right side. In order to solve this problem, we need to find the centroid of that distributed load. We need to find the point as if all the force is acting at that one single point. Let's assume that point is somewhere over here. You can assume that it's more to the right than to the left because the force increases as we go to the right. So that is the assuming the centroid and I guess we don't have to put it up there. We can put it right down there, there's a centroid. We need to find that distance away from the x-axis, or not x-axis, but I, I would say from point A. We need to find this distance, let's call it x is equal to question mark, and let's put a little line over it that indicates this is the x-coordinate of the centroid of that distributed load. How do we find that? Well, since it's slanted right here, if we go ahead and divide it into two regions, one region which is rectangular in shape, it is easy to find the centroid of a rectangle, and then here's one region that's triangular in shape, and it's actually not that hard to find the centroid of a triangular shape. We know that it's one-third the distance from the base to the peak, that means it would be one-third the distance from this side to this side. Using a different color, the centroid of the rectangular portion would be right in the middle, would be right there, the centroid of the triangular portion would be somewhere in this region right there. We need to find, let's call it x sub 1, and we need to find x sub 2 of those two regions. Let's now find the centroid right here. Let's, to find this right here, we can do that as follows. And I have too many pens in my hands. Let's put those down. The x-coordinate of the centroid is equal to the sum of all the x-coordinates of all the individual regions times the total force of each region divided by the sum of all the forces of all the regions. That's how we find the centroid. In this case, this is equal to the x-coordinate of the centroid of the triangular portion, we know that it's two-thirds the distance from the peak, one-third the distance from the base. If this is six meters long, it would be four meters to that centroid. Four meters multiplied times the, and I don't need to put the units down, it's sometimes a lot cleaner just not to put the units down. So what is the force of this distributed load? It's 3,000 newtons per meter here, it's 6,000 newtons per meter there, and it goes for a distance of 6 meters. Actually, the area gives you the total force. That means what goes in here would be the area as displayed by this triangle. Area 1 is equal to, that would be 1 half the base times the height. And I'll put the units in in this particular case, so you can see that units actually work out quite nicely. This is equal to one half the base. The base in this case would be six meters. And the height would be the difference starting from 3,000 newtons per meter to 6,000 newtons per meter. The height, therefore, is a difference of 3,000 newtons per meter. Notice how the meters cancel out and you're left with newtons. 1 half times 6 is 3, times 3,000 equals 9,000 newtons, which is a total load represented by that triangular portion. It goes in our equation right here, a total load of 9,000 newtons. The, the x-coordinate of the centroid of the triangular portion times the total force represented by the triangular portion. We add to that the centroid of the rectangular portion, which must be exactly in the halfway spot between A and B, that's 3 meters, multiplied times the total force represented by the rectangular portion. A2, that is represented by the area, A2 is equal to the width, 6 meters, times the height, which is 3,000 newtons per meter. So let me put meters down, and times 3,000 newtons per meter, that is equal to 18,000 Newtons, that's the total force represented by the rectangular portion, which goes in here. 
And then we divide that by the total force of every region combined. That means 9,000 newtons plus 18,000 newtons. And that gives us the distance to the x-coordinate of the centroid of the entire loaded, the entire distributed load. Using a calculator, 4 times 9,000 plus 3 times 18,000 divided by 27,000 equals, and we have 3.33 is equal to 3.33 meters. That's the x-coordinate of the centroid of the entire distributed load. The distance from there to there equals 3.33 meters. And that's the point as if all the force was acting to that single point. That's the point that we can use to say the entire load appears to be, be, appears to be acting at that particular point right there. Now we can find the reactionary force at A and the reactionary force at B. Starting with the reactional force at B, I'm going to place my pivot point right there. So I'm going to take the moment at A. And since everything is in equilibrium, I can then say that the moment of A should add up to zero when I add up all the moments, when I add up the moment caused by the load on the beam and the moment caused by the reaction of force at B. Let's write, let's put down the reaction of force at B, F at B. We can now say that the moment at A if I sum, all the, uh, sum up the moments contributing the moment at A, that should add up to zero. And the first force will be the load on the beam acting in this direction that will cause a clockwise torque or clockwise moment. Clockwise moment is considered a negative moment. Minus the total force. The total force is equal to 27,000 newtons. And the distance at which it acts from, the, from point A is 3.33 meters. Plus, because now the reaction of force at B causes a counterclockwise torque or counterclockwise motion, the force at B, and it acts at a distance of six meters away, six meters, then we can find force B to be equal to, and move this to the other side, 27,000 newtons times 3.33 meters and divide that by 6 meters and that gives us the reactionary force at B. And it's 15,000 newtons. Now we can do the same by moving the pivot point over to the other side and then find the reactionary force at A that way and let me write down the reactionary force right here, F sub A. However, we can also use the following principle. We know that the sum of all the forces in the y direction must add up to zero. And if we add up all the forces in the y direction, we get the load pointing downward, a total of 27,000 newtons, minus 27,000 newtons, which is the distributed load across the beam, plus 15,000 newtons caused by the reaction force at B, plus the reactionary force at A which means the reactionary force is simply 27,000 newtons minus 15,000 newtons. F at A is equal to 27,000 newtons, which is the total load, minus the portion supported by uh, point A. Subtract 2, I get 12,000 newtons, which is the amount of force supported by, uh, at point A. So I think I said point A, but I actually meant that point B right there. So, 15,000 newtons is supported at B, 12,000 newtons is supported at A, and that's how you deal with distributed loads. The key is, find the centroids. If you need to chop up the distributed load into several sections so that geometrically you can find the centroid of each section separately, you then find the x-coordinate of the centroid using this technique as we have before. That gives us the location of the centroid. The entire distributed load appears to be acting at that particular location, from that, you can then find the reactionary force at A and the reactionary force at B. And that's how that's done.